comes your way next on The Voice of Texas. I, like I said, critics of the show, you don't need to be a supporter of mine or agree with me to be on this program. Uh, I enjoy the debate. I want to get to the bottom of solutions to issues. And uh, it helps when uh, you have somebody of like mind who may be either center or right leaning to uh, offer a different perspective. So those perspectives are welcome here. Let me bring on Lynn Davenport, is an education analyst and executive director of Families Engaged. She travels the state teaching parents and citizens how to exercise parents' rights and use the law to fight lawlessness in government schools. Lynn, welcome to the program. Thank you, Chris. I appreciate the opportunity to talk with you. Yes, ma'am. Let's, uh, let's start here. Quote, Chris Salcedo has a very shallow understanding of the school choice Trojan horse. And if you probe him on the details of the banking schemes, he can't deliver, and neither can you. And you were making reference to uh, the two representatives I had on the Newsmax show discussing parental school choice and education freedom. So in your mind, where am I going wrong? Well, the devil's in the details, and, and that's why I said you have a shallow understanding, because I know that I, I've listened to your show many times, and I understand your talking points. And those are shallow talking points. And if you really look at the mechanism and the details in the financing of the school choice dollars and the, the banking schemes, then you see the devil is in the details. And they're really not only are they unconstitutional, but they set up a whole other a whole new avenue for fraud, waste and abuse. It actually grows government. And so I think most of the low information voters and those who like the the idea of taking the money and letting the money, letting the money follow the child, that sounds great. But when you look at what it really means, it's deceptive semantics, parent well, empowerment. What is it, what is it really? So, so tell me what it really mm -hmm. means when, when parents get to determine where that money, which institution it goes to, why, why is that not correct in your view? Well, because not only does the education savings account set up a new private vendor, up to five vendors can collect up to 5%. And it actually can, they can collect up to 10%, but the way that House or uh, Senate Bill 1 was written by Senator Brandon Creighton, that allowed for the vendors to collect up to 5%. And then it runs through the comptroller, which is another 3%. The bill actually grows government, and that's that's my been my criticism of the the right, the supposed conservative right, is because they're the big spenders in the legislation. I mean, in the legislature, they're well, the ones doing all the spending. And when I've had lawmakers on the program, Lynn, I have I have said, look, to me, it's a rather simple equation. You have a, um, a money that's dedicated that every single butt that sits in that seat inside of a GovEd mm -hmm. school. They get money deposited for every butt in that seat, correct? Right. They get money from the right. state. So my contention is that money should go be transferred into a bank account uh, under the parent's name for the parent to direct which institution it, it goes to with no strings attached. You can't ask for qualifications. And, and again, I'm going to get into the constitutional argument you made here in a minute because I think that's fascinating too. But – Every lawmaker that I've spoken to, I said, it's got to be that simple. You've got to make it that simple. And I know that there have been proposals out there. The Senate bill isn't universal choice anyway. It's, it only impacts, what, 1% to 3% of kids, if that. So it's not mm -hmm. even universal school choice as it is. So I know that's not perfect. And I know that they're not even doing any work on this over in the House. I haven't seen a final bill of which to give an analysis yet because it's in constant state of flux. But I've said mm – -hmm. Basically, what I want and what I think every parent wants is the money that is directed toward the child that can right now only be cashed in a government institution. That needs to be made available to any institution the parent sees fit, and it's really that simple. So talk to me about the constitutionality aspect. Well, well okay, first of all, Article 7 for, in the, con the Texas Constitution makes provision for public free education. So the problem lies in the... The details of Article 7, where you propose a bill, the two are incompatible because we how are so? to make for public free schools. Now, but, let me know. Hold on. Man. How are they? How yeah. are they incompatible? Because remember, uh, you are to provide the schools, which the state has done, 
And mm -hmm. a parent can either go to that school that teaches critical race theory or LGBTQ, ABCDFG, cultural Marxism <laughs> that uh, also breaks Texas laws like the ban on CRT. You can, they can go to that school that defies uh, Governor Abbott's lawful orders on the prohibition of masks, or the parent can go to another school. It's it's not that the state's denying the funding. The parents are given the choice as to whether or not this, the, the, the child goes there. So the funding Fair is way. there for them if they qualify. Yes, and, and we do have choice. I mean, a parent has the, the right to send their child wherever they want. Now, what you're really getting down to is do they have the money to send them there. Correct. So going back to the, the constitutionality, you know, we are a representative form of government. And so these private in institutions, they don't have the elected bodies like the public schools do. So you're talking about diverting funds into private hands. And once a private school, let, let me propose this. Once a private school or homeschool family accepts the money, that school is no longer private. If you accept the state dollars or the federal dollars, it doesn't matter. There's still tax dollars. There has to be accountability. And we've even heard the governor said uh, over a year ago, he was at a, 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 you know, the big press thing he does, the big, um, it's like a stage for him. He was down in South Dallas. And he, he said there will be accountability measures, talking about school choice dollars. Right, and so I've, talked to the governor, said, I've talked to the governor about that, too, and several other in, uh, proponents in the legislature saying, look, under no circumstances can the state uh, get their meat hooks either into private schools or into homeschooling. There, there can't be those types of strings attached. And everybody I've spoken with, again, there's no final bill so I, I can't tell you whether or not they've, they've adhered to that promise. They have insisted that, they, that there will be no strings attached. And I, I don't, there's no such thing as government money. You and I both know that, Lynn. It's, yeah, tax, taxpayer it's, tax, dollars, right. it's taxpayers' money. Mm -hmm. So, Well, let's, let's speak to that. So I, I've actually testified before the, the House and the Senate talking about this. Yeah. Why don't you just propose a clean bill? Why don't you have a bill where the money never leaves your property taxes? They won't do that, and that's because – this is an agenda. This is a Trojan horse. This is a, it's a global agenda. It's not just something that we're talking about in Texas. They've been trying to propose this since Bush in 1994. We're going on nearly 30 years where they've brought vouchers or some sort of school choice uh, to the legislature. Every session, it sucks out the oxygen in the room. It takes all the energy. It creates, and please tell me you know about the Hegelian dialectic problem, reaction, solution, or syn synthesis. So I've, this, yes, this I've heard the argument. The, yes. Yeah. So it, it, it creates the polarization. And I've watched this for years. And you have that. Well, hold on. Are, Let me stop I'm you there. Gonna, Let me stop yeah. you there. The polarization. Because mm -hmm. you, it, it, it is, in my mind, uh, a difference between those who want to imbue in an elite few all the decision, the power, the money, and those who want to distribute that power and that money among the many so it isn't centralized in one in one area. I don't mm -hmm. believe in an all-powerful centralized governing authority over anything in this country, much less in education. So, and, and as you look at GovEd's administration of of what of where they have what they've done with all this unconditional money, it is a dumpster fire. Government is the worst possible investment for education that we could be making. Well, okay. So it is the worst. You look at where well, can you and I agree on that? It is the worst. Yes. Putting these and educrats in charge. Uh, again, you've got these this perversion being taught in in GovEd, the racism being taught in GovEd. You know, teaching white kids to hate their own skin color and teaching black and brown kids to hate white people. That's happening. We just talked about the the manifest, the alleged manifesto of the of the shooter up in uh, Nashville and regurgitating all of these these left-wing talking points that these people are learning inside of GovEd and it's it's a it's a absolute dumpster fire with all the all the taxpayer money going to a centralized governing authority and letting them just make all these policy decisions that's not working so my question to you Lynn is if what i'm proposing and what others are proposing education freedom and parental school choice isn't the solution what is mm -hmm. Well, we, we've got – what I think that the – since we've got the power and the majority in the legislature, and we have for decades. <laughs> well, I don't know about okay. that. 
Yeah. Well, mm-hmm. hey, look, I mean, I watched them get a bill through House Bill 1605, and that was a, a technology vendor bill. And, I, and we had the votes to kill it because it was a $2.44 billion bill. This is just in the last session. Mm-hmm. And you've got Dick Weekly and TLR behind it. You've got TPPF. You know, all the policy wonks are behind it and, and the lobbyists and people like Dan Huberty, who used to be in the legislature. They're all behind it and they're all going to get paid if it passes. Well, it did pass. And, and it, it passed with 100 percent of the Republican senators, with the exception of Bob Hall. And why, so, so why are Republicans growing government? Why are they passing these bills in again, education? Let's, let's, education well, is I'm where the, ask, the bulk Lynn, of the money goes. I'm going to mm-hmm. ask again because, look, if, if mm-hmm. parental school choice, universal parental school choice isn't the answer, then mm-hmm. what is the achievable goal that, that those who are – because – I will submit to Starve you. Starve the beast. That's what I'm saying. That's what I'm well, getting at. Is well, quit spending the money, and we are in control. We've got Mike Morath at the helm of the TEA. He was appointed by the governor. Don Huffines was singing his praises at his his um, swearing in ceremony when he was um, what's what do you call it when they're um, uh, installed. Uh, yeah, I can't think of the term, but yeah, okay. So you got the right that I mean, the government is TEA is the government. And ask Brian Harrison, why are all these people so enamored with Mike Morass, who is, uh, by all accounts, uh, an educrat and a and a bureaucrat and a he's even a Marxist. I mean, the way so, he operates. No, he's no, I, I understand. I understand. He's grown I know. I guess so, We're so, growing so, government, and this is coming from the right. They love him. So They're again, the ones growing the education. Uh, let me let me go back to your solution, which is. Starve the beast. What does a starve the beast bill look like? Okay, so you would repeal. Well, first of all, you would never send money to the federal government. So you would repeal ESSA. So we get our 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 Texas legislature. I mean, our uh, our U.S. uh, You got to get the Congress. You got to get everybody on board with this. I've heard Louis Gohmert talk about this. We need everyone talking about this. Instead, all they talk about is those woke school districts and CRT and I mean it's the same old talking points. Yeah, yeah. Okay, great. That exists. But how do you starve the beast? You quit funding all of this from the top down. You get rid of the TEA. We need to defund the TEA. We shouldn't even have a TEA. We shouldn't have a federal department of education. We've got to repeal the bills that are in existence that drain the money from the taxpayers. Okay, so and, and we have to audit. So what I'm, so the other just, thing is you have to audit. I don't want to miss. I, no my, one wants to talk on. about this. With my shallow understanding of of, of uh, education, let me just let me just see if I'm reading yeah. you right. That you think our effort should be getting rid of the Department of Education, which, by the way, isn't a storied organization. It was only it was cursed upon this country by Jimmy Carter in the 1970s, and mm-hmm. which I which I agree with. It's a redundancy. It is another way for government to get its meat hooks into our people. I would if it went away tomorrow. I wouldn't. I wouldn't shed any tears. You also say we need to get rid of state education. So what I'm hearing from you is government has no place in education. No, I'm saying that we we're supposed to be funding our schools with our property taxes. We are supposed to have public free schools in our neighborhoods. We are supposed to have locally elected boards who represent us. Well, we are supposed to have the local. The education is a local decision. But well, well, no hold on, wait a minute. A board. Whoa, 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 wait a minute. A board yeah. is government. A board is government, and it's these boards that is putting pornography inside of Texas schools, and well, they, and, and they do so with impunity. And if you show up to the board meeting, you're called and you complain about it. You're called a terrorist and told you can't speak. So again, I'm I'm with you in in making sure because I don't believe government has any role. In education, I believe it should be. Well, and par- we would differ in that because I, I, I we <laughs> none. I was educated. Were you educated by the public schools? Uh, in the government-run schools, yes. Back when they were public schools, back then. <laughs> well, if you understand how we got here, that came through bills and legislation and federal intrusion, and this was the schools were set up to fail a long time ago. Yeah, and but LBJ they're failing. They're failing after, our kids, after and that's Kennedy was shot. Yeah, Listen, they're failing our he, Lynn, they're probably, failing our kids, and th- and that's again, the status quo is unacceptable. And uh, what I hear, you still you you don't like the idea of parents having this of choice. You want to go, you want to you want to work within a system that is already proven to fail, and I don't. 
I want to destroy well, I would argue that the system actually created the best, the greatest nation on earth. The the system was is it, not the problem. Well, I, I, the system you, was it, attacked. The system was set up to fail. The system was yeah. There, yeah, there, the, the system through, was set up to fail, a system and it has. In, and that's what I'm telling you. Bill after bill after bill. Right now but we're we have, living. We hold on, I, and I've only got a little bit of time left because I'm I'm, I'm up yeah. against the clock. So, Lynn, look. We're, right now, we are living the fruits of this system. We are living the fruits of this system, and the system is a failure because it takes parents out of the decision-making process. It removes those who are the, the stakeholders in the outcome. It removes them from the process. And the only way I know as a conservative to put them back in charge is to give them the power of the purse. Once these educrats and bureaucrats have to bend the knee to the taxpayer, which is a dynamic which I am in favor of, then then you start getting what we call accountability. Elsewise, if they don't have to perform, Lynn, to do to get their money, that you just have some Dade feeling or the next shrub who wants to come in and write blank checks and then tune out as to what's going on in our schools. They don't want they don't want to administer it. They don't want to police it, but they don't want to give parents the power to do so either. And that's wrong. It's absolutely wrong. So last word to you, what, how, can, how can we move forward because the status quo is unacceptable? Go ahead. Yeah, uh, well, I would say that we need to repeal the bills like Senate Bill 123, get the kids off the technology. 123, that, that puts government character traits in the schools. We've got too much money spent on the infrastructure of technology. That's where the bulk of the money goes. Get the kids off the devices, return to a classical education, books, paper, pencils, pay the teachers with the money saved on what we're spending on the technology and all of the, the um, as you say, the indoctrination. Yeah. And, and, uh, and return the, the money to the taxpayers. Quickest way, in my opinion, Lynn, to do that mm -hmm. is to – Take the money out of the hands of the educrats and the bureaucrats and those who have no incentive to listen to what you just said. They have no incentive. They get your money already. The system makes sure they get the money. The minute somebody starts threatening to take money out of their pockets, you get their attention. The minute a parent can tell them, screw you, no, I'm not going to take my child to your indoctrination center, then they've got choices to make. But well, right they now, can do that now. We have that choice right now. Well, right now, that's right. They have that but unchallenged power. Starve them power. of the butts and the seat funding. Pull your child out. Sure, you can do that. You yeah, can do that and, right and a, lot of, a lot of parents have. But don't oh, take the money because every single bill I've seen thus far yeah. has had strings attached. And that's the bottom line. You can say we can, right. oh, well, we can protect, we can write that into the bill. No, they will not do it. Not one legislator has presented one bill that was clean that did not have strings. Every single one of them has 28 plus pages. Well, there you Why? go. And, and that's, a, a, that's where you a, and I can an agree. Agenda, yeah, and the government, governor won't sign it unless it has strings because that, he's a globalist. We know he's, has, well, he's aligned to the World Economic Forum. This is the Trojan horse. They want all children to be folded into the system, public school, private school, charter school, homeschool, all children. That's this where you and I can that's where you and I can agree. No strings that if if we do go down this road of parental school choice, no strings. Uh, it's it's going to be the parents choice. They will have the power of the purse to make the determination how to best educate their child. Lynn Davenport, educational analyst and executive director of Families Engaged. If folks want to get in touch with you Lynn, where can they go? Uh, Twitter, Lynn S. Davenport or uh, familiesengaged.org. All right. Good discussion. I hope I wasn't too shallow. <laughs> Talk to you again soon, all right? And that's it for uh, this hour of the Chris Salcedo Show. And actually, we got one more break, don't we, Russell? Be right back on The Voice of Texas.